Hello, boys and girls. I'm going to try to do our book this way because I didn't bring the Elmo camera back with me, the one that I usually show. So I'm going to read our next two chapters of Charlotte's Web. We finished up on chapter six, and so now we're on chapter seven, Bad News. So for those of you following along, we're on page 48. Wilbur liked Charlotte better and better each day. Her campaign against insects seemed sensible and useful. Hardly anybody around the farm had a good word to say for a fly. Flies spent their time pestering others. The cows hated them. The horses detested them. The sheep loathed them. Mr. and Mrs. Zuckerman were always complaining about them and putting up screens. Wilbur admired the way Charlotte managed. He was particularly glad that she was always put that she always put her victim to sleep before eating it. It's really thoughtful of you to do that, Charlotte, he said. Yes, she replied in her sweet musical voice. I always give them an anesthetic so they won't feel pain. It's a little service I throw in. As the days went by, Wilbur grew and grew. He ate three big meals a day. He spent long hours lying on his side, half asleep, dreaming pleasant dreams. He enjoyed good health and he gained a lot of weight. One afternoon, when Fern was sitting on her stool, the oldest sheep walked into the barn and stopped to pay a call on Wilbur. Hello, she said. Seems to me you're putting on weight. Yes, I, I guess I am, replied Wilbur. At my age, it's a good idea to keep gaining. Just the same, I don't envy you, said the old sheep. You know why they're fattening you up, don't you? No, said Wilbur. Well... I don't like to spread bad news, said the sheep, but they're fattening you up because they're going to kill you. That's why. They're going to what? screamed Wilbur. Fern grew rigid on her stool. Kill you. Turn you into smoked bacon and ham, continued the old sheep. Almost all young pigs get murdered by the farmer as soon as the real cold weather sets in. There's a regular conspiracy around here to kill you at Christmas time. Everybody is in the plot. Lurvy, Zuckerman, even John Arable. Mr. Arable? sobbed Wilbur. Fern's father? Certainly. When a pig is to be butchered, everybody helps. I am an old sheep, and I see the same thing. Same old business, year after year. Arable arrives with his twenty-two. Shoots the... Stop! screamed Wilbur. I don't want to die. Save me, somebody save me. Fern was just about to jump up when a voice was heard. Be quiet, Wilbur, said Charlotte, who had been listening to this awful conversation. I can't be quiet, screamed Wilbur, racing up and down. I don't want to be killed. I don't want to die. Is it true what the old sheep says, Charlotte? Is it true they're going to kill me when the cold weather comes? Well, said the spider, plucking thoughtfully at her web. The old sheep has been around this barn a long time. Let's see if I can get that picture in here a little better. There we go. The old sheep has been around this barn a long time. She has seen many a spring pig come and go. She says they plan to kill you. I'm sure it's true. It's also the dirtiest trick I have ever heard of. What people don't think of. Wilbur burst into tears. I don't want to die, she moaned. I want to stay alive right here in my comfortable manure pile with all my friends. I, I want to breathe the beautiful air and, and lie in the beautiful sun. You're certainly making a beautiful noise, snapped the old sheep. I don't want to die, screamed Wilbur, throwing himself to the ground. You shall not die, said Charlotte briskly. What? Really? cried Wilbur. Who's going to save me? I am, said Charlotte. How? asked Wilbur. That remains to be seen, but I am going to save you, and I want you to quiet down immediately. You're carrying on in a childish way. Stop your crying. I can't stand hysterics. Chapter 8. A Talk at Home On Sunday morning, Mr. and Mrs. Arable and Fern were sitting at breakfast in the kitchen. Avery had finished and was upstairs looking for his slingshot. Did you know that Uncle Homer's goslings had hatched? asked Fern. Oh, how many? asked Mr. Arable. Seven, replied Fern. There were eight eggs, but one egg didn't hatch, and the goose told Templeton she didn't want it any more, so he took it away. The goose did what? asked Mrs. Arable, gazing at her daughter with a queer, worried look. 
told Templeton she didn't want the egg anymore, repeated Fern. Who is Templeton? asked Mrs. Arable. Oh, he's the rat, replied Fern. None of us like him very much. Who's us? asked Mr. Arable. Oh, everybody in the barn cellar, sheep and the lambs and the goose and the gander and the goslings and Charlotte and me. Charlotte, said Mrs. Arable. Who's Charlotte? She's Wilbur's best friend. She's terribly clever. What does she look like? asked Mrs. Arable. Well, said Fern thoughtfully, she has eight legs. Well, all spiders do, I guess. Charlotte is a spider, asked Fern's mother. Fern nodded. A big gray one. She has a web across the top of Wilbur's doorway. She catches flies and sucks their blood. Wilbur adores her. Does he really? said Mrs. Arable rather vaguely. She was staring at Fern with a worried expression on her face. Oh, yes, Wilbur adores Charlotte, said Fern. Do you know what Charlotte said when the goslings hatched? I haven't the faintest idea, said Mr. Arable. Tell us. Well, when the first gosling stuck its little head out from under the goose, I was sitting on my stool in the corner and Charlotte was on her web. She made a speech. She said, I am sure that every one of us here in the barn cellar will be great gratified to learn that after four weeks of unremitting effort and patience on the part of the goose, she now has something to show for, for it. Don't you think that was a pleasant thing for her to say? Yes, I do, said Mrs. Arable. And now, Fern, it's time to get ready for Sunday school and tell Avery to get ready. And this afternoon, you can tell me more about what goes on in Uncle Homer's barn. Aren't you spending quite a lot of time there? You go there almost every afternoon, don't you? I like it there, said, replied Fern. She wiped her mouth and ran upstairs. After she had left the room, Mrs. Arable spoke in a low voice to her husband. I worry about Fern, she said. Did you hear that way that she rambled on about the animals pretending that they talked? Mr. Arable chuckled. Well, maybe they do talk, he said. I've sometimes wondered. At any rate, don't worry about Fern. She's just got a lively imagination. Kids think they hear all sorts of things. Just the same, I do worry about her, replied Mrs. Arable. I think I shall ask Dr. Dorian. Hey, Dorian, your name's in here. I think I shall ask Dr. Dorian about her the next time I see him. He loves Fern almost as much as we do, and I want him to know how queerly she is acting about that pig and everything. I don't think it's normal. You know perfectly well animals don't talk. Mr. Arable grinned. Maybe our ears aren't as sharp as ferns, he said. The end of chapter eight. Well, that's, you know, that's what they say sometimes, that, that as we get older, we aren't listening and we can't hear it anymore and our imagination changes everything. Maybe kids can hear the animals talk. Maybe fern can hear that. I mean, she remember that whole speech. How would she remember that whole speech if that really didn't happen? What do you think?